going to go over the toxins that are most likely to be asked about on the AP test. The AP test does ask questions about certain toxins, and these are the most famous or infamous toxins, um, and so we call these notable toxins. Your paper should look like this chart, and you should fill in this chart while I go through the slides of the presentation. So the first toxin to know about is lead, and it's found in old pipes, old paint, old gasoline, and currently in batteries, so not old batteries. So this word here is a little bit covered up by the picture, and it says gasoline. So you'll go ahead and fill in your chart with these items. If you're ever asked about lead on an FRQ, make sure that you don't just write that it's in paint, because it was banned in paint in the 1970s and it was banned in gasoline in the late 70s, early 80s. So it's only in old paint, old pipes, and old gasoline. Pipes in your home now, if you have a newer home, they're usually copper or aluminum um, because of the lead situation. Now, in batteries, so regular batteries, there is lead, which is why you are not allowed to um, throw away a used battery into the trash can. It's actually against the law in California to do that. Um, so what you're supposed to do is bring them like to the public library where they have battery receptacles, or you can drop them off at a hazardous waste center. Um, College of the Canyons has a hazardous waste roundup where you can just go and drop off all your hazardous waste, including paint and batteries and other hazardous waste, about four times a year in their parking lot. One of the big things about lead is that it's a neurotoxin, so it causes brain damage and kidney problems. And the reason why um, lead is particularly important right now is because of Flint, Michigan. So if you have been paying attention to the news for the past couple years, Flint, Michigan had an issue um, with lead in their drinking water. They had old pipes. Now, a lot of old cities around the country have lead pipes, but there are ways to prevent the lead from getting into the water. And Flint, Michigan, um, they not only didn't prevent it, but they also uh, did not use the correct um, additives for the water supply that they were using. And you'll learn more about that. So one of the reasons why lead it infects children to this day. It's not really from our water supply. And even in Santa Clarita, you're not gonna have lead in our water supply at all. It's not a concern that we have. But if you have an old house, older than the 1970s, so if your house was built before 1970 and it has old paint from that time, uh, one of the main ways that babies and toddlers get lead in their system is from ingesting paint chips. So um, they, you know, little kids and toddlers put things in their mouths and that is uh, one of the ways. So if you ever um, buy or live in an old house and you have children around, little children, um, you should get some of the paint chips tested. If you have paint chipping off from a doorway or a window, you should get that tested. And you can send it away, you can just Google it, you can find labs that will um, test it for you. The next toxin that you need to know about is mercury. So we have this big, huge uh, progression of how it gets into humans, and you do need to memorize the whole chain of events. So mercury is actually found in coal. So how does it get into humans? Well, we burn coal to make electricity. You'll learn about that later in chapter 19. So the mercury becomes airborne, and you can see it from the picture over here. So we burn the coal, the mercury becomes airborne. And then rain will bring it down into rivers and into the ocean, where through bioaccumulation and biomagnification, it makes its way up the food chain into your top predatory fish. And so most people will be eating tuna. So tuna has, sword, um, has mercury in it, but also swordfish and shark and albacore and halibut. And so that's how mercury ends up in humans. It's also a neurotoxin, the same as lead. And so uh, the 
kind of the place to know is that uh, in Japan there was this place called Minamata Bay and here the mercury was dumped into the bay and people ate a lot of fish and it wasn't even just tuna or your top predatory fish in Japan it was all the fish got heavily influenced by mercury and so the company that dumped it in dumped it in over a period of time and nobody knew it and so people were eating this fish over several months or a couple years and then all of a sudden all these people had these thousands of people had mercury poisoning Mercury, um, you can also think of the Mad Hatter in Alice in Wonderland. They used to use mercury when they made hats. So people that were hat makers way back in the 1800s, 1700s, they um, often went crazy because of the neurotoxins that are found in um, mercury. So as far as your top predatory fish, Oh, and you should know right here that word is tuna. So there are limits on to how much tuna that you should eat. You can go to, uh, to a tuna calculator um, online. You can just Google a tuna calculator with mercury and you'll come up with one and you put in your weight and your sex and what type of tuna you like. So if it's chunk light tuna in a can or if it's white tuna in a can or if it's sushi grade tuna that you like it will tell you how much is safe to eat in a week and that's really important thing to do and especially for ladies later on when um, you decide to have children someday um, it can affect the fetus during a pregnancy more than even an adult so make sure that you pay attention to mercury in fish So the next toxin is asbestos, and this is an old insulator. It was banned because it causes lung cancer and scarring of the lungs, and it was banned, but it's still in old buildings. So if the buildings are older than 30 or 40 years old, they could have asbestos. In the 94 Northridge earthquake, a lot of um, the asbestos became um, out of the uh, the walls because the walls had crumbled and so they had to do asbestos removal in some buildings, old buildings. So it's fine as long as it stays in the walls and the ceiling and it doesn't get exposed um, through an earthquake or demolition, then it's fine. Actually, it doesn't hurt you at all. But if they are tearing down an old building or if they, uh, you have an earthquake or some other kind of damage, it can become airborne. So most of the issues with asbestos were with the workers who installed it or who have to clean it up. And when you clean up asbestos, you have to get in big hazmat suits now so that you don't breathe it in. The particular type of lung cancer you need to know is mesothelioma. And do memorize that word. And that's the specific lung cancer for asbestos. And then asbestiosis is the scarring of the lungs caused by asbestos. And again, in Santa Clarita, we're not gonna have a whole lot of asbestos because our buildings are not um, that old, most of our buildings. Um, but again, even if you're in an old building, as long as it's not having work done or construction or any kind of earthquake, it's fine, it's not harmful. PBDE is the next one. So PBDE is a very common toxin in our homes. It's a good fire retardant. So they put it in computers. So in case your computer fan breaks and your computer overheats, then um, it will slow the fire. They put it in cars in the dashboard. So if your engine catches on fire, it will slow down the flames and allow you time to get out of the car into TVs in case of fire. Um, it's put into plastics a lot. It's actually also put into our pillows and mattresses. And that's the one that really bothers me because we're sleeping on top of this chemical. Now they put it in pillows and mattresses to protect people that smoke in bed from catching on fire. So if you are drinking and you're sleepy and you're smoking in bed and you accidentally fall asleep and your cigarette lands on your bed and catches your bed on fire, well, then the PBDE will slow down 
the flames and maybe you'll wake up in time to get out. And so that's why they put it in those items. Now, personally, I don't smoke and uh, I'm not gonna fall asleep with a cigarette on my bed. So I don't feel like I need this in my pillow and mattress. Um, and so it's a little frustrating that these chemicals are in everybody's pillows and mattresses. Now, there are places you can go where they don't put it in, and Ikea is the one I know of. Now, there may be others um, around, but I do know that Ikea does not put them in their pillows and mattresses. That's the only one I know of, and there could be others. So here's the thing. It's a possible endocrine disruptor. There is a lot of research out. There are connections. Before we can say absolutely it's an endocrine disruptor, there has to be repeated studies. So the first studies that are come out say, yes, it is an endocrine disruptor. Um, and But we have to say the word probable because, again, we have to repeat data over and over before we can say that it's for sure. And... When they've done studies on human breast milk, they found that women excrete it. So it is getting into our bodies somehow. Um, somehow this flame retardant is getting inside of us. So DDT is a very famous toxin. It's banned. Now it really mostly hurts your top predatory birds. So your top predatory birds are your bald eagle. Now that was the most famous one that diminished because of the, um, the DDT. Um, but the other ones are the peregrine falcon. And then you also have the brown pelican and the osprey. Now these populations have actually returned. So we banned DDT after the book Silent Spring. So you should know this already. We have been talking about this previously this semester. And so it's been banned for about 50 years and the populations of the birds are returning. So that is good news. They, most of them are taken off the endangered species list, list, but they're still threatened and protected. We now have bald eagles that fly on occasion through Santa Clarita and we haven't had those for decades. So that's only happened in the past couple of years. Now, if you look at the poster though, DDT was advertised way back in the day, so this looks like from the 30s or the 40s, because people could buy it in powder form and they could sprinkle it around the, um, their house to keep the ants out. It's a really good pest control. And it is one of the dirty dozen that's at the end of chapter 14. PCB is also banned. It's part of the Dirty Dozen also at the end of chapter 14. There is still a ton of PCB and DDT in the environment because it's a POP, we call it a persistent organic pollutant. They stick around a long time. So the Arctic Circle, and in your book, there's something called global distillation, and you'll read about it, and it's the air currents and ocean currents tend to take toxins to the Arctic Circle where they kind of remain. And so PCB and DDT and other toxins are in high, high levels in the organisms that live up at the Arctic Circle, in polar bears, walruses, the human the Inuit, which sometimes people call Eskimos, but the, uh, the real name is an Inuit. It's in their systems as well. So they have very highly toxic blubber up in the Arctic Circle, walruses as well, and seals. The reason why it was banned was it was really, really bad for people. Um, but again, it's going to take a long time to break down the environment to a form that is not harmful. The next one is bisphenol A, BPA. So pr again, a probable endocrine disruptor, which is why California has taken steps to ban it. Now, it hasn't been banned by the EPA or the USDA or the FDA or any of those, but California law, we actually voted in the law about five years ago that bans it in baby products because we want to be on the safe side. We don't want baby bottles or pacifiers or anything to have 
BPA in it. Now, unfortunately, you all grew up with BPA in your bottles because it wasn't banned before then, and we actually didn't know. And the same goes for my children. We had no idea anything about BPA and its harmful effects. And when we did, we started pursuing laws, but um, again, it wasn't that long ago until we started banning it. You can still find BPA in a lot of plastics. Your receipt tape now, it feels kind of shiny and plasticky. That is uh, BPA in it. And then this is one that you can keep an eye out for. Um, the lining of food cans. So if you buy a can of chili, like right here, or um, a can of tomato sauce. So they line steel cans. So these are steel cans and they line the inside with plastic to prevent rust. And this most of the time has BPA. Now, if you buy an organic brand, usually there's no BPA. Um, another, and you can read the can. Sometimes the cans will say no BPA on the can. Another one is to buy an imported product from Europe because it's not allowed there. So when I buy tomatoes for, I make my own spaghetti sauce, I will either get organic or buy a European brand of tomatoes. Or some stores like Sprouts, their canned foods will say on there no BPA. And the, from the people that research, so the scientists that research BPA, though they say that it's you don't want canned food that is acidic, so tomatoes. So be real careful if you buy canned tomatoes that you're getting a can without BPA. The other things, it's not as, as, as necessary because, so tomatoes are acidic and they're gonna leach the BPA out of the plastic. Whereas a can of corn is not acidic or a can of peas or a can of applesauce or pumpkin or whatever is not acidic and so your BPA would not leach into the food. But with tomato products and other acidic foods, it would. So the people, again, the scientists that study BPA say um, look for no BPA cans when you buy tomato products. Cadmium. So I never had cadmium on my list until a few years ago when the APS asked an FRQ about cadmium. And so now it makes it to the PowerPoint. So cadmium is in your rechargeable batteries, and it's pretty similar to lead. It's a neurotoxin, so it causes brain damage and lowers your IQ. And then in high doses, it can cause um, mental illness and death. So rechargeable batteries um, are also, if they're all used up and they have been recharged and recharged and they can't hold a charge anymore, you again cannot put it in the trash because they are toxic waste and we will study landfills in chapter 22 and you will see that um, landfills can leak when they're not made properly and so we put hazardous waste into special hazardous waste landfills and so again when you're done with a cadmium battery you take it to the library for recycling um, or city hall or other places that collect. I've heard Best Buy collects things too, um, like that. The next one is Aldicarb and it is legal. So this one is still used as a pesticide. So teratogen causes birth defects. There's a lot of data that shows that it is a teratogen. Um, it causes these problems. Now, the biggest issues are really for your farm workers, but you want to make sure that when you buy fruits and vegetables that are not organic, that you wash them thoroughly to get off any of the pesticides um, from them. And again, it's highly toxic and it is legal. Now, atrazine is a herbicide, so make sure you know what these things are. Aldicarb is a pesticide, it kills bugs. Atrazine is an herbicide, it kills plants, so weeds, it's a weed killer. And so we have endocrine disruption, and this is the one that's in your book where um, you have a guy named Louis Gillette, and you have Tyrone Hayes, and they've been studying alligators and frogs, 
and um, we have hermaphrodites, we have um, impairment of reproduction because now they have linked it to atrazine. Now the people that make atrazine have vehemently denied and said the studies are flawed. So we'll see where that all goes in the next couple of years. Um, it again is a very commonly used weed killer. Phthalates. Now, yeah, rubber duckies, right? So it creates soft plastic. And in a lot of, um, in Europe they're banned, and in some places they're banned um, in children's toys. Anything that's soft plastic, you want to make sure it, it's phthalate free. And because it causes birth defects, it causes breast cancer, it messes up the hormones. So it's an endocrine disruptor. And in Europe it's banned um, because, again, Europe has better consumer protection laws than we do. And in California we've banned it in children's toys. So if you are going to buy children's toys, make sure you buy them in uh, California or in Washington because those are the places that it has been banned. And that's it for the toxins.